Well, who needs a little whimsy, maybe a little fairy tale in their lives? There's plenty of that tonight with the Magic Smelt Puppet Troupe and Cinderella as our guests. You'll also get a peek at the imaginative sculptures of Robin Murphy and music from Hattie Peterson and her man band. It's a big show. Funding for The Playlist is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. She has a voice that's both cool and passionate. Hattie Peterson writes songs that'll set hooks in you. Please welcome Hattie Peterson and her man band to the playlist. We'll hear more music from Hattie and meet the Magic Smelt Puppeteer right after this. There's not a message or a cause behind it at all. It's fantastically fun. I'm having a good time doing it and I hope people enjoy looking at it. My name is Brian Barber. I'm an illustrator and animator and designer here in town. We felt like Brian's uh, due was due. It was time to celebrate Brian Barber because he is such a force in the community. If you look at business logos, commercial animation, book illustration, um, he's had a hand in all of that. It's definitely commercial art. There's some humor in almost all of the pieces and I think a lot of it is from books, so a lot of it is geared towards kids. It's gonna be a very family-friendly show, so bring the kids along too. I think they'll enjoy it. I believe the formal name Annie gave it is Brian Barber of Retrospective or something like that. And it opens April 19th, and the show will be up until June 17th. Now 
Now, a puppet parade is meant to engage you. As the creator of the Magic Smelt Puppet Troupe, Jim Ure trains mask makers, stilt walkers, and imagineers of all sorts, and he's here to fill us in on Duluth's first Magic Smelt Parade. Jim, welcome, welcome to the playlist. I think you got a great look there. You look smelt-like. Okay, I think that's it. <laughs> Hey, Karen. Hey, thank you so much for coming over. Yeah. You have made some fantastic puppets, and I know this Magic Smelt Troop. Now, is this truly the first Magic Smelt Parade in the city of Duluth? Yes, to yes. be sure. Yep. Uh, Magic Smelt did appear uh, in the All Souls Night back on November 2nd last year uh, near the depot, but it wasn't a smelt theme. It was El Dia de los Muertos, so it was a skeleton, you know, or kind of a, a funeral. So t tell me about this, guys, and I understand <coughs> his, his eyes are still um, wet, so I'll go easy on him. <coughs> That's right. So this is one of our smelt clowns, and uh, it's sculpted in clay, and then a paper mache form is built over it, and then the paper mache form is removed uh, from the clay mold, and then we finish it off and, you know, rig it so that it's, it's wearable as a mask. And this is going to be one of the characters in our presentation of the smelt queen on Sunday. I think that's just fantastic. Now you've been working with um, different folks in town doing workshops and that's we have right. some video of that so you okay. can see kind of the different scales of the puppets you have. Mm -hmm. Some of them are human um, size that's and right. some of them are much bigger. That's right. Yeah, so um, a lot of times in this country when people think of puppets, they oftentimes think of uh, sock puppets or, um, uh, you know, Sesame Street type Muppets. Uh, but we kind of stretch the definition of puppetry a bit and we treat the uh, mass characters as if they were big puppets. And then as you said, we have some larger puppets too that are quite a large scale. Um, <clears throat> uh, like there's a smelt queen uh, that's probably about 15 feet long. That's gonna be part of our uh, presentation and our parade on Sunday. Just fantastic, and, and teaching people to make these very cool masks right. has got to be kind of a challenge, but also, you, do you see the kid come out of him? Oh, completely, yeah, like when you wear a mask like this, I mean, your identity is concealed, so a lot of times people um, are able to be, you know, less inhibited uh, when they have a mask on, and I think that a good puppeteer oftentimes is a kind of a different personality type than a good actor. You know, an actor, of course, is kind of drawing attention to themselves and trying to convince you that they're something else. But when you put a mask on, you're automatically something else. Um, so a lot of people respond, you know, to mask performing that maybe wouldn't make good actors. So yeah. you bring a, a wealth of, of experience. I mean, you've done puppets. I know you've been That's involved right. with the Grand Marais Solstice Parades. That's right. Um, you were here for the Day of the Dead Parade here. Yep. Um, but go back a little bit. How did you get hooked well, on this, and where do you come from as yep. a puppeteer? My background is within the Heart of the Beast Puppet and Mask Theater, and there's a event in Minneapolis. It's coming up on May 6th this year. It's the May Day Parade and Festival. And that's been going on, I think it's 36 or 37 years now. And I was a principal artist in terms of designing uh, parade floats and masks and images uh, with the May Day Parade in the 80s and 90s. And then more recently, for 13 years, we've been doing a summer solstice pageant up in Grand Marais. Uh, I own a cabin in Grand Marais, and I got to meet some artists in the area, and then somebody said, we would like to do something up here. So we've been doing a summer solstice pageant. It'll be the uh, Saturday closest to the summer solstice in June up in Grand Marais. So we do a big uh, pageant there. Uh, now I live in Duluth, and uh, this event on Sunday is really the first thing that we've kind of uh, conceived and, and are produced you know, on our own. So this new outfit here in Duluth is called the Magic Smelt Puppet Troop. And will we get to see more than just a smelt a year? Will we oh, get to see anything oh, else? Oh, we, we expect to do more, yeah. yeah. But for starters, uh, we hope that folks can come down to the area lift bridge at 4 o'clock, right behind the Maritime Visitor Center, and uh, participate in this parade. And I'd like to explain, if I may, um, how this parade differs from other mm -hmm. parades. A lot of times, uh, you know, most often when we think of a parade, we think of something that you stay in a stationary spot, say on the sidewalk, and watch the parade go by. This is a parade, we call it a second line parade, which is a term that comes from New Orleans. And a second line parade is a parade in which everyone participates and moves with the band. So everybody who comes to the aerial lift bridge on Sunday at 4, uh, will be invited to come with us or encouraged to come with us as we process down the lake walk with our puppet and mask characters. And not just with the puppets and masks, but a 12-piece brass band. I'm glad you mentioned that. Wow. The brass messengers are a brass band from Minneapolis, and uh, we, we're bringing them up here to be the musical accompaniment for the parade. And then they're also going to play at the Zeitgeist Arts Cafe where we're having a smelt fry that'll start at 5.30. 
What a thing to pull together. Jim. Yeah, it should That's be a lot awesome. of fun. And really a cool thing to add to the, the variety of arts events that are happening. I think this is the, the most engaging. The stilt walkers are yours too, right? That's right. We and have stilt walkers as part of our, our new troop here. Yeah. Pretty yep. exciting. So mm -hmm. thank you very much for doing this in Duluth Great. and coming Thanks over for to me. telling me yeah. about it. Our pleasure. Very uh -huh. cool. We'll see Good. you on Sunday, I okay, hope. Okay, terrific. Okay. Yep. I want to remind you now to join in the Magic Smelt Parade meetup at the foot of the aerial lift bridge Sunday at 4. The route takes you along the lake walk to a smelt fry at the Zeitgeist Arts Cafe. And if you're lucky, you'll meet the smelt queen in person. Her sculptures kindle curiosity, be they human figures or animals. Robin Murphy imbues her ceramic pieces with a narrative and with character. Step inside the clay studio and you'll explore Robin's world. I like to make these little busts because I think they're fast and they're funny. I really like the process of just making them and see what ha see what happens and see what kind of expression I can do. My name is Robin Murphy. I live in Duluth, Minnesota, and I am a ceramic sculptor. Well, and sometimes too, you know, when you can let that sort of clay process show, that's always exciting when it just kind of works as seeing the edges and the cracks and the things like that. Now he's starting to look good. <laughs> I think I'm interested in a lot of the ephemeral moments in life, you know, just little, little bits of this or that, you know, vulnerability or excitement. The acrobat is bouncing on the head, and the head kind of represents the world or life. For me, the whole idea was the balls are golden to sort of represent um, whether they're latent gifts or talents or learning about yourself. That so, and she has a lot of. Um, she's very determined, but at the same time, a little girl too. To me, the story isn't necessarily done or complete. Um, it's complete enough for me, but it also has enough. Uh, ambiguity that people can come into it on on whatever level. I think this is always the the biggest struggle and it's so different from like a painter you can work everything at once and I haven't figured out how to do it that way yet. It's kind of you got to somewhat rough in the proportions as best you can before you can really and 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 really refrain from doing too much detail sometimes you can struggle with something the struggle is okay when you finally start to see it happening start to see what you want to happen happen <laughs> almost think i'm getting the arm finally <laughs> She's a little bit more, I suppose, ritual looking than I normally do. But I kind of like that about it. Where the ideas come from, I don't know. One idea leads to the next and leads to the next and then sometimes you have to just like wipe all those ideas away and try something different. If you can stand back and look at it and go, God, I made that. That's that's good. I like it. <laughs> you know, that's then it that's satisfying. That keeps you coming back. When you're out cruising the Duluth gallery scene, keep an eye out for Robin's work at Lizard's Art Gallery in downtown Duluth. Now the artwork in our playlist gallery tonight features paintings by Tom Tyler, and they're part of a series based on works of literature and poetry. The stoneware piece is by Dorian Ballou. Now there are two more artists represented by Lizard's. Discover more information and links to the arts on our website, theplaylistonline.org. You can share your thoughts and ideas on our Facebook page and get the latest updates via Twitter. And now please welcome back Hattie Peterson and her man band.
Welcome to the playlist. Thanks for having us. It's so nice to have you. Well, you introduced your bandmates. What a talented trio you have here. Yeah, sure thing. Dave Frankenfeld, Matt Mobley. Excellent. And the three of you, as Hattie and Hattie her man, her man band, band, are working <laughs> on new music. And this is some of it, yes? Mm -hmm. All three of these pieces will be on the upcoming album. And how long have you guys been playing together? A little over a year. This? Yeah, a little over a year. Oh, and mm -hmm. tell me about your songwriting process. You're the one that's coming up with the songs at this point, or tell yes. me how that works. How does that work? <laughs> um, I basically pick up my guitar when I feel like it, and if I find some guitar chords and a rhythm that I like, I start throwing down words. And sometimes it goes well, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it incubates for a year or two or five. And what comes first for you, <laughs> the the music, the rhythms, and then the words, and all with More guitar, not keyboards. <clears throat> all with guitar. I never, I don't know how to play keyboards, oh. or the piano. I never did learn. So, who <clears throat> do you look up to in the music world, as far as um, musicians you may admire, or who do you think has influenced you? Hmm. I, the first person that comes to mind is P.J. Harvey, just because she's so innovative and uh, such a heavy rocker. <laughs> so, how would you describe your music? You know, that, that's the, the million dollar question, if you can come up with the exact right words. How mm. do you describe it? Because it, it's a beautiful sound, but, and it's unique. How would you describe it? The, it there's, <laughs> there's more of a rocker in there, and I like yeah. that, but you have a really um, cool voice. Thank you. If I, if I practiced more guitar, I think I would have, I would rock out even harder. I just <laughs> am very limited in my guitar skills. But <clears throat> I do I, what I can with what I can. These guys bring it up quite a bit. Yeah, there's, there's some talented, mm -hmm. talented guys to oh, yeah. be backing you up. Now, live music coming up, gigs coming up, do you know? Homegrown is all we have lined up for right now. Okay, yeah. awesome. And where am I going to be able to find this new album yet to be named, right? Yeah, we're, we're not quite sure. I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards just putting it online for free download. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So how would I find it? Google Hattie Peterson? I'll let you, uh, I'll let you know. <laughs> uh -huh, it's a secret. Facebook for sure. You know, that's the easiest outlet. Call me, text me, you know. Okay. 
And are, are there already <laughs> recordings out there if I look look for them? Or is this your Yeah, very there's first a couple one? things online. Bernie Larson produced a song of mine recently and made a little video and put that out there. So I've got that. And there's probably some old recordings if you dig deep enough on the internet. And being able to hear you live is, I mean, I have my whole bias is for live music mm -hmm. always. So to be able mm -hmm. to be here live tonight is really a treat. It's a treat for us too. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Woohoo! You're done. I'm getting nervous. I know. <laughs> We got one more song for us. We do. And I want to thank you for being here. Well, thank you. And I want th to thank these guys for watching tonight and remind you to go out and support live music and local arts. And you guys, I leave it to you. Thank you. You bet.